Hello, my name is Rafat Yaqub Agha from 9BC, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve mathematical questions involving negative indices with square roots and cube roots. But before we start, we need to know a few rules about negative indices and square roots and cube roots. Let's get started. The rule for negative indices is a to the power of negative n equals 1 over a to the power of n. Now the way we solve this is we put a to the power of negative n over 1, and we bring the pronumeral with the negative power to the denominator. This changes the form of the negative n to become a positive n. Therefore, we got the answer of 1 over a to the power of positive n. Now the rule for square roots is the square root of a equals a to the power of 1 half. Now the way we solve this is the, the a inside the root has an invisible power of 1, and the root itself has an invisible power of 2. So the, but going back to the answer, the numerator and the power is the power of the pronumeral that's inside the root, and the denominator for the power is the power of the root itself. Same thing goes for the cube roots. The pronumeral inside the cube root has an invisible power of 1, and the root itself has a, a power of 3, which is already stated there. Now, going back to the answer, the power of the answer is 1 over 3. So again, the numerator of the power is the power of the pronumeral that's inside the root, and the denominator of the power is the power of the root itself. And that is how we got the answer of a to the power of 1 over 3. Now let's solve some challenging questions. Here is our first question, and the question asks us to simplify and leave the answer in a positive form. So what we do now is, so, is raise the powers. So you, I would raise the power of 4 to 7 and the power of 4 to t. So after you have raised all the powers, you should get this answer. And you might be wondering why we got 1 for the t to the power of 7 to the power of 0. This is because anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So now moving back to the question, it asks us to simplify and leave the answer in a positive form. So that means we have to change the t to the power of negative 11 into a positive indice. Now to do that, we just move it to the numerator. So after making t to the power of negative 11 a positive indice, you should get the answer of this. Now what you do, you have to solve the numerator. So after you have solved the numerator, you should get the answer of cube root 2401 t to the power of 27 over 7. So if you're wondering how I got t to the power of 27, it's all about the first index law, which states that when multiplying terms with the same base, you add the powers. So t to the power of 16 and t to the power of 11 both have the same base. So we just have to add the powers. So 16 plus 11 equals to 27. Now all you have to do is type on your calculator cube root 2401 over 7, and your answer should be 7. And now for the t to the power of 27, all you have to do is cube root 27, which would be 9. So your final answer should be 7 to t to the power of 9. Now going back to the question, it asks us to simplify and leave the answer in positive form. We have simplified it and kept the answer in a positive form. This means we have solved the question correctly. And now let's move on to the second question. Here we are with question 2, and again question 2 asks us to simplify and leave the answer in a positive form. So to make things easier, I'm going to split the question up into two sections, and do this part first, and then this part. So this is section 1, and this is going to be section 2. So let's get started with section 1. So after square rooting the numerator and cubing the denominator, you should get the answer of 12 a to the power of negative 3, y to the power of 5, over 4, a y to the power of negative 2. So now, going back to the question, it asks us to leave the answer in a positive form. So any negative pronumerals, we move down to the bottom. So a to the power of negative 3 needs to go to the bottom. And y to the power of negative 2 needs to go up. So after making the negative indices positive, this should be your answer. Now what you have to do is simplify the numerator and simplify the denominator. So after simplifying section 1, this should be your answer. Now let's move on to section 2. So the first thing I need to do for section 2 is raise the power of negative 3 to the numerator and the denominator. So after raising the power of negative 3 to the whole bracket, you should get this answer. Now, recapping the question, it asks us to leave the answer in a positive form. So all the negatives we have to move to the bottom from the numerator and all the negatives from the denominator we move to the top. So 4 to the power of negative 3 goes to the bottom, and a to the power of negative 3 goes to the bottom. 
3 to the power of negative 3 goes up, and y to the power of negative 9 goes up. So after making all the negative indices a positive indice, now all you have to do is solve the numerator and solve the denominator, so simplify it. So after simplifying this part, you should get this answer. Now that's the simplest form, so what we have to do now is add both of these parts together and solve the question. So now all we have to do is times the numerators and times the denominators. So your answer should be equal to 3 times 27 is 81. 81y to the power 15 plus 7 is 21 over 64. a to the power of 21 plus 4 is 25. This is our answer since it is in positive form and the simplest form. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you learned something new about solving negative indices with square roots and cube roots. Thank you.